What I want to um, give my review on is the Kanye West documentary on Netflix. And I am not, nor have I ever been a diehard Kanye fan. Um, I like the music and the songs, but I'm not the average Kanye fan. So when the movie, the, the CD, the concert, all that stuff, when he was doing that, I um, mind my business. I didn't try to attend any of that. But um, my daughter suggested, she called and she said, have, have you watched it? And I said, no, you know, um, that's not something I want to watch. And she said, I think you should watch it. Um, I think you of all people would um, understand the relationship between Kanye and his mother. So I gave it a shot. And in the beginning, I was like, I'm not going to finish this. And then I kept watching. And then um, what struck out to me um kanye west said in the interview years ago i don't remember um, that he sees music in color that's a a creative person's curse we see colors and words and pictures and things that other people might not see so while we are trying to deal with this difference that nobody really understands of like seeing in color or um words making pictures or piecing together a story it's, it's a it's what I heard Nas say the gifts the the curse of the talented which is the it's a it's, it's definitely a gift uh, but it's a curse too so watching Kanye understand that he knew he was greater than what he was given watching him chase his dream watching him um, pay for a lot of that out of pocket, um, do it in between times, still showing up to work, still being humble because at the time he was, but he was really um, chasing his goals. He was signed with um, Rockefeller Records, but there was no support behind him. So everything that he did for his whole first album, he did himself and it cost him $33,000 for the video. And then he was reaching out, asking for favors. And it, it, it really made me understand more because I have also been at that point chasing the, my dream because I'm not a fan. I did, I thought that he was in with Rockefeller and he just got, got the deal because they knew how talented it was. I didn't know he had to go through all that he had to go through. Um, and that's why it's important for me to do research or to do um, f figure out who somebody is for myself before I, I judge. And the whole time Kanye is doing this, um, he's doing it for his mother. They have a, a, an amazing relationship. They're close. Um, she's his biggest fan. He's doing it all for her. And then she dies. And Kanye blows up. And then we say he's crazy, but he's not crazy. He's lost his best friend, his um, his mother, his 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 world has literally come crashing down. And the only thing he knows to do is keep working because even though he sold all these records, he's won all these awards, and he was able to give his mom the things that she wanted, she need he couldn't save her life. And for those of us that have watched people lose their mothers that's tough um especially for a, a boy I, I hear it's even worse because of the bond that they share but um all the money that kanye's made all the money that he had he couldn't save his mom so of course that kind of stuff would drive he said and um it all falls down that having to drink the syrup would drive us a, 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 a man insane can you imagine what he's put himself through with losing his mother, feeling like he's losing his kids. And I do not excuse anything Kanye does as far as harassing Kim. That's not, it's not okay. It's, it's not right for him, for her, for the kids. But he's afraid and um, he lost other stuff that wasn't to, in his control so he doesn't want to lose his family now being the creative person that he is he wants to work but he doesn't want to lose his family so a lot of times creative people um we break down but 
because we've always had these high standards for ourselves, we don't share it with anybody. And we, he's not gonna say he needs help. When actuality, he does. But to to say that he he in in the thing he said, have you ever been handcuffed because your brain was too big for your head? And they kind of just looked at him, and he was like, "Well, I have." And then he said that, you know, the medication was making him gain weight. Well, if he's conceited and the weight makes him look like something he's not used to, well, that can also cause another issue, um, which will give you another addiction because you're so um, addicted to winning that this weight thing has to come off. And then he said at one time he was addicted to Percocets. Um, all those are mind altering drugs. So it literally makes you either numb or makes you not who you are. And a lot of stuff you're doing, he doesn't even realize it. I'm sure he doesn't, he, to some extent he realizes it, but if, if, if these things has been his escape, because a lot of people get addictions and it's something that, um, we think we have a handle on it and nobody will admit to having an addiction. I've never heard uh, an alcoholic or um, a drug addict admit to being one while they were one. Um, it's something that once you're clean, of course you can say, yes, I did this. Um, and all addictions are not quote unquote bad addictions. Um, I read in a book that Jim you could be addicted to gym. You could be addicted to work. You could be addicted to success. It's a lot of addictions that some people may think are okay, but then deep down, it's still an addiction. And addiction is not something that you actually um, can always control. And it's not something you can always see, but it's something that you can definitely get help for. And um, I want to encourage the people that's close to Kanye to, to try to help him before it, it, it gets out of hand because Kanye does have some diehard fans and Kanye is their addiction. So you don't know how far they will go to try to help him get his family back. So, um, I think everybody should watch it. Um, Kanye fan or not, if you have a dream, if you have a goal, if you're talented, if you're gifted in some kind of way, such as Kanye, such as myself, other artists, um, if you're gifted, then um, nine times out of 10, you're probably an empath. So you're taking on other people's feelings, other people's emotions. So it's, it's so scary to watch this play out, knowing the things that he's gone through and um, understanding him because loss, I think is lost. And um, everybody processes grief differently. Um, I tell people, I can understand how someone feels they lost their brother because I lost my oldest brother, but I can't tell somebody else how they feel about losing um, a sister or losing uh, a mom. I, I, I can't, I can uh, sympathize but I can't empathize because I don't know. And I thank God that I don't know those. But losing a brother, I do know. Losing yourself, I do know. Um, losing a child, I do know. Um, or a, a pregnancy, I do know. Um, chronic illnesses, I, I can sympathize. But the one thing about having endometriosis is, it's no cure. It's no cures, they can't figure out a cause. Um, when you're black, it makes it even more difficult. So that's something that even um, you try to hide because you feel shame or blame. Because it's not cancer, but um, we go through things that cancer patients go through. Um, it's not heart disease, but it affects our heart. Um, it's not um, epilepsy, but it affects our brain. So um, even that, on top of being creative, when you want to go out into the world and create, but your body says, not today, you go, you go seek this one now. That is another thing that I feel like can drive a sane person insane or drive a crazy man insane. But uh, right now, everything is so microwavable, so let's do it, let's hurry up and get it over with. Man, we ain't really paying attention to what's going on with our neighbor. We too busy trying to figure out how we gonna eat, how we gonna buy gas. And welcome to 2022.